Welcome back to Square Off. President Joe Biden won Arizona in 2020 by just 11,000 votes over Donald Trump. He'll need to win our swing state again in 2024 if he wants to stay in the White House. I spoke with Biden's national campaign co-chair after his re-election announcement last week. Congresswoman Veronica Escobar of El Paso told me how much Arizona matters. I asked her whether the president gets Arizonans' concerns. Here's an edited version of our conversation. Can Joe Biden keep the White House, hold on to the White House without winning Arizona? We need Arizona and a number of other key battleground states. And it's my hope that Arizonans see the investments that the White House has made, how uh, President Biden has prioritized addressing drought um, and other issues that are a threat to Arizona's future, the way that the president has stood up for Arizonans' freedom, uh, the way that the president has defended our democracy and is working to build an economy from the middle out, not from the top down. Um, so Arizona is, is critical, it is key, it is important, uh, and we're gonna be there a lot. So here are the real kitchen table issues every Arizonan feels right now. For much of the last year, we've had the highest inflation rate in the country. Rent is unaffordable for many young people. Gas prices are at record highs. What is the president going to do about that? Well, we are very focused on making sure that we lower costs for the American public. And we made some serious advancements, for example, through the Inflation Reduction Act, lowering the cost of, of health care and, and lowering the cost of pharmaceuticals as well and capping the price of insulin. Um, we have seen record uh, numbers of jobs, 12 million jobs created uh, under this administration record low unemployment uh, numbers we haven't seen in five decades and half a century. Um, and so there's still a lot more work to do. I'm sure many viewers will say, hey, I haven't heard anything in that response about gas prices, about housing, about food costs. Is there anything a president can do specifically to deal with that? You, you know, there are there's there's some things that that a president can do and some things Congress can do. Um, we passed legislation uh, last year in the House of Representatives um, to address increasing gas prices. Uh, almost all of our Republican colleagues voted against it and, and it did not go anywhere in a very uh, close 50-50 Senate. Um, housing, we are making investments in housing, but all of these investments take time. Um, it is very challenging and, and very difficult to turn things around uh, from one day to the next. The new ad appears to presume that Donald Trump will be the Republican nominee. Is that what the president's campaign committee is operating under? Well, we know if it's not Donald Trump, it will be a, a Trump-like figure. I mean, the, the fact of the matter is uh, there's not a whole lot of diversity of thought among the uh, Republicans running for the presidential nomination, at least the majority of them. We also know that this is not the same Republican Party of yesteryear. This has become essentially uh, Donald Trump's party, uh, controlled and led by some of the most extreme voices in the Republican Party. We'll continue that conversation right now with our political insiders, Christine Jones, an attorney and former Republican candidate for governor, and Roy Herrera, a Democratic election law lawyer at the Phoenix firm Herrera Ariano. Welcome back to Square Off. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Any disclosures you need to make about topics we're going to discuss this morning? Roy? We're going to be talking about President Biden, and I represented President Biden here in Arizona in the 2020 election. Lawyer, okay. And Christine? None for me today. None for you. Okay, so... With the caveat that the 2024 election is 19 months away, almost two years, my goodness, a lot can happen. That said, what are the issues, who are the voters the Biden administration, Joe Biden, excuse me, needs to pay attention to in Arizona? Well, I think Congresswoman Escobar made an interesting point, which is any Republican candidate is either going to be Trump or Trump-like. So... Biden somehow has to appeal to some of the people who have just gotten sick of the shtick. But I do think it's critically important for them to have some kind of an answer on the economy, on the border, 
on sex trafficking of children in Arizona. These are issues that are not partisan and they appeal to every single person. And if they don't come, with all due respect, Roy, with an answer for these, I think 11,000 votes is not all that difficult to pick up. That's, uh, and that, I've heard that from uh, many Democrats. Same question for you, Roy. The issues the voters Joe Biden needs to speak to. Well, I mean, I think the, the most obvious thing to point out is, is exactly what, what Christine just mentioned, which is it's very likely, and in fact, I think it's almost certain, that Donald Trump is going to be the Republican nominee. So we're going to have a, a repeat of the 2020 election. And because we're still in a position where Donald Trump doesn't concede the fact that he lost in 2020, and he's going to continue with this election denialism, I have to imagine that the democracy question is going to be one of the main issues, which is why we saw this in, in President Biden's ad. But in addition to that, the economy is going to have to be a major issue for the president. I mean, he has to own the last four years. There are a number of things like the infrastructure bill, like the CHIPS Act, that over the long term are going to you know, benefit Arizona in, in a lot of ways. But he is going to have to answer questions about inflation and gas prices. And 11,000 votes. Uh, there are concerns about the Latino vote, which has been trending rightward in recent years. How much should Joe Biden be concerned about that here in Arizona? Well, you, you have to be concerned. I mean, 11,000 votes is not a lot of votes, um, and it's going to be a tight election no matter what uh, here in Arizona. And the difference maker, I think, are going to be Latino voters. You are going to have potentially uh, Ruben Gallego at the top of the ticket in the Senate race, which I think can help the president. But he is going to have to talk about, you know, again, pocketbook issues, how they affect the Latino communi community here, as well as immigration reform, which is a big issue. Okay. Just one quick follow-up sure. on that. The CHIP Act, the infrastructure bill, your team, Biden's team, has to be able to show demonstrably beneficial results, and they have not done that yet. Nobody in Arizona knows where any of those billions of dollars are, so you're going to have to show people how that helped them in order to make that helpful. Got to help them touch it, ballot. feel yeah. it, just actually Absolutely. get it. All right, let's move on now to ranked choice voting. Governor Katie Hobbs vetoed a Republican bill that would ban it, but there is a statewide vote next year to introduce ranked choice voting. Please explain to me and our viewers what ranked choice voting is. Generally, you mark one candidate for each race. In Arizona, most of the races are won by a plurality of votes. You don't have to have a majority. In other words, 50% plus one vote. Ranked choice voting would say, in order to win, you must get a majority of the voters supporting you. So instead of throwing away your vote, we would give you the chance to rank the people on the ballot from one until the end, however many people you want to rank. So if your first choice doesn't win, we'll count your second choice. And if your second choice doesn't win, we'll count your third choice. And this is very controversial, partic controversial particularly with party activists, because it is a way basically to nullify the party voice. And the party doesn't get to pick anymore who This they is mainly want. in primaries. Well, also it's working in general, general elections as well. as well, right? We just saw in Alaska Sarah right. Palin lose as a result of this. So I think the parties are, are pushing back, particularly the Republican Party, because the Republicans have been the freedom fighters, and they want the chance to pick their own candidate. And this essentially gives over the choice to the full electorate, and that didn't seem fair to the people who are participating in the primaries. And at least in the legislature, they're holding on to the slimmest of majorities. So why are Democrats okay with it? because it does give them a shot at more power? Well, I'm not sure if the Democrats are going to be OK with it. I think it's still an open question on whether the two political parties here are going to be OK with it, because it is a big change. It's a wholesale change in how we do elections. My understanding is the group in Arizona are looking at a top five uh, ranked choice voting. So the general election would have five candidates that won in the primary, and then you would rank them. And I think for voters, I mean, this is going to have to be approved by voters, it's going to be a complicated argument to make to them, because a lot of voters are going to be like, so we're going to be in a situation where the person, the candidate, who had the most first place votes is not the winner, that's going to be difficult, I think, for a lot of voters to swallow. Whoa. That, Th that this can, is really confusing. It can and has happened, where the person sure. that got the most for votes did not win the actual mm -hmm. outcome of the election. And it, it's very complicated to explain. So, you know, you got to be able to do it in seven second sound but, bites, and that's tough. And you both did it very well. So thank you for that. All right. Got to end it there. Christine Jones, Roy Herrera, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.